have these incredible red landscapes that remind me so much of a road trip that Sam and I did in Nevada. It also reminds me of a place that we visited in Kyrgyzstan. Oh yeah. Remember that? Imodium, Imodium. Popping pills to plug him oh. up. Well, good morning guys and greetings from the town of Ukiya here in the province of Huhui. Today we are road tripping again. The plan is to visit two towns, Ukiya and also Umawaka, so we're actually heading north. Yeah. And yeah, my dad's already been shopping early in the morning. We found the market here in town. I got me a terracotta uh, pot. Yeah. yeah. So this one we're going to use to make some beautiful stews That's and right. lentils mm. and stuff like that in Canada. Incredible price. What, 480 pesos? Yes. Maybe seven, eight bucks, something yeah, like seven, that? seven, eight bucks. Great deal. Here, right in the middle of the square. Yeah. yeah. The church is under uh, renovation, so yeah. we cannot visit. But we're going to go up uh, the hill here. There is a beautiful red uh, mountain. Yes. And 11 o'clock, the sun feels like a laser beam on us. <laughs> Samuel is hiding behind the He's wall. He's in the shade. Yeah, man. In I, I, shade. I, I got a wicked sunburn. I was <laughs> half an hour late putting on sun cream yesterday. Oh. And he got screwed. I got lit up. Now, to this morning, we were calling him Mr. Lobster. Yeah. Lobster, lobster. You know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm not doing so great either with the altitude. And uh, my stomach is just... Uh, Imodium, Imodium. Popping pills to plug him oh. up. <laughs> oh my, okay. But uh, what can you do? <laughs> you know, we we plug ourselves uh, up and we go out exploring. Yeah. Let's go hiking. So, let's go hiking. Let's go yeah. hiking. Put this in the trunk. So Ukiya is a place that we visited completely by chance. This small town is located just off the side of the highway between Tilcara and Umawaka, so it's super easy to get to. We'd highly recommend stopping here if you're road tripping in the province of Huhui, because as you're about to see, the landscapes directly behind the town are pretty spectacular. All right, guys, well, here we are exploring the town of Ukiya. The main attraction in town is actually a 17th century church that has paintings from the school of Cusco and also like angels holding weapons and like all these strange things. So that's typically what people come to see in the town. However, at this moment, the church is closed for renovations, so we were only able to have a look from the outside. And now we have driven up a few blocks into the mountain to a place called Quebrada de las Señoritas, where you have these incredible red landscapes that remind me so much of a road trip that Sam and I did in Nevada, where we visited um, Red Rock Canyon, Valley of Fire. So yeah, it's just stunning. Sam's throwing the drone up in the air. We're gonna do a little bit of hiking and show you these incredible colors. Well, what do you think of this place? You've been glued oh to the camera. Oh my gosh, it's incredible. It reminds me of actually two destinations. The first thing that came to mind was uh, obviously when we went to Nevada, mm -hmm. two places in Nevada, Red Rock, and uh, it was like, was it the... Uh, Valley of Fire? That's uh, exactly the same thing I was saying. Yeah, and the other thing too, is it also reminds me of a place that we visited in Kyrgyzstan. Oh yeah. Remember that? Somewhere? Oh. Oh my I gosh. I remember I'm, those red rocks, yeah. I'm so bad with names, but it, it's just incredible out here. And I think there's only like four or five people visiting at the moment. It's, it's amazing. It's like you've got this mm -hmm. beautiful landscape and more or less all to yourself. Mission's free too. You gotta love that. <laughs> yes. So, impressions so far? Quebrada de la Señorita. Exactly. Yeah, I wasn't expecting uh, something like this in such a small town. The landscape is exactly, exactly as if you were in a western movie yeah. you know those old uh, western movies with the uh the cowboys the, the cowboys and the blue coats you know the, the the soldiers of the united states and it feels like any minute now someone is gonna pop up from behind a rock and start shooting with a winchester you know a repeating hmm. winchester or uh i don't know Geronimo is going to appear, something like that. It's it's amazing this place. I I, I wasn't expecting uh, to find something like this. Very very similar to all the uh, southern uh, states of the U.S. like New Mexico, Nevada, it, uh, Arizona, Arizona. You know all those places. This could be the set for a film, those kind, with no problem, and nobody even uh, would suspect that it was uh, filmed in uh, Jujuy, uh, Argentina. You know. 
Amazing place, really amazing. We then continued driving further north to the town of Umawaka. At this point in the day, it was already around noon and we were cooking under the sun, so we really didn't spend very long here. If you're traveling during the warmer months, we definitely recommend going earlier in the day or later in the afternoon so that you can enjoy walking around the town rather than desperately seeking shade like we were. On the way back, we did stop at this rather unusual roadside attraction called the Llama. It's impossible to miss because, well, there's a giant llama to greet you right on the side of the highway. This is a market that sells spices, wines, jam, ceramics, and all sorts of artisanal products from the region. And if you're hungry, you can also get some food here. Well, time for an update from the car yeah, so, where we actually have shade. A much needed update. So we drove for a little while. Yeah. So we came to the bigger town of Umawaka. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's a bigger town for sure in this yes. region. <laughs> Considerably bigger. It seemed quite a bit bigger than Tilkara, much bigger than Pumamarca and some of the other places we went to. Mm -hmm. So we kind of drove around the town for a little bit and then we noticed this gigantic monument that had cactuses and we just parked the car. I went up with my camera. I mean, it's just boiling hot this time of day guys yeah. don't don't and it's go not even summer that's yeah. worth mentioning don't go out at, at noon here yeah <laughs> so i went out and i filmed that for a little while uh it was a really interesting square and then i noticed there was a little regional museum inside and for 15 pesos which is oh my gosh that's really cheap maybe 20 30 cents i was able to go into this neat little regional museum there was artwork inside there were sculptures mm -hmm. and yeah just walked around we didn't explore the town too much again it's too hot it's a bit of a bigger town but if you want to see more, there is a, a famous church to visit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's also the gateway to visit uh, a El mountain El Ornocal. Ridge. Exactly. But, okay, let me mention El Ornocal is 25 kilometers away from Umawaka and it's all on like loose gravel and dirt roads. Yeah. So it's kind of hard for little cars to make it up there. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the only we've got loose stomachs today, so we're not going on loose gravel roads. That's 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 the final verdict. Anyways, we're kind of heading back home. We stopped at this uh, this very touristy place. There's a giant llama. We went inside. You got some spices for your mom. Oh yeah, you want to show us sure. my purchase? I'll show you the purchase. It was one dollar each. I got three yep. different spices. Look at that. So. Your different mom. colors. Ooh, Don't ask me to name them. They smell nice and it looks like stuff my I mom cooks like with. I think like cumin is one of them for sure. Mm. Um, yeah, they, they smell great. And anyways, we noticed on the way back, because we are heading back to our place, we noticed that there is a, a vineyard, a bodega. And so we're going to stop by and see if we can purchase some wine from Huhui. We've never seen or purchased wine from Huhui anywhere. And so it would be a real find if we were able to, to grab a bottle from here, either to consume for an asado or to take back home for mm -hmm. the one in Canada. Continuing with the theme of random roadside stops, we also pulled over at a vineyard. This right here is Bodega Viñas El Parchel, a family-run high-altitude vineyard and winery located just south of the Tropic of Capricorn Line. We met Mabel, who showed us around the place. ¿Cuándo hace que empezaron? Mucho? Trece años. Trece, Trece años. años sí. ¿Y el agua dónde la sacan? Agua de pozo. Oh, ¿Tienen perforación? Perforación, 60 metros, 80 metros de profundidad. Uh, ¿Y buen, buen agua? Muy buen agua, bien mineralizada. Un suelo bien pedregoso, bien arenoso. Bueno para las vid. Le encanta, le encanta, digamos, el estrés, mucho calor, mucho frío. ¿Y cuándo, la, cuándo hacen la regadera? ¿La vendimia? Sí. 
En abril, mayo. Well, guys, we are back in our little house here in Tilcara, and we have some wines to show you because on the drive back, we stopped at a little bodega. There are very few bodegas here in the province of Jujuy. It's something that's still starting up slowly. Very because, slowly. Because, I mean, high altitude and very little water in this area. Yeah. But yeah, we stopped at this one. It's Viñas del Parchel. But it's a very small uh, bodega. They only started doing wine, uh, manufacturing wines about 12 years ago. Yeah. They have about uh, 20, 20 acres, she said, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, I think 22 yeah. acres. 22 acres. But and only uh, six of them are planted with vines. Yeah, with vines. And they have yeah. uh, uh, Malbec. They have uh, Syrah. They have uh, Tanat. Tanat. And uh, I think they have a little bit of a Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm -hmm. These flies are everywhere. The thing is that they only, they're all reserves because they've yes. been uh, 12 months in uh, oak uh, barrels, mm -hmm. right? So they, they, they qualify as reserve. Mm -hmm. And they produce a limited amount of 5,000 bottles only in that bodega. So these wines were not even ready to be sold. Mm -hmm. She had to prepare them, and the only one that got fully uh, dressed with all the labels yeah, is this one here. that is the Malbec uh, Syrah. Mm -hmm. You see, has all the labels. The other two, she gave them to us with uh, she put the plastic uh, wrapper and she's the uh, the backing of the uh, because apparently uh, they didn't have the labels. Uh, on, uh, on that spot, right? Uh, they were not cheap. A bit more high end. Yeah, a little bit higher end. This one has a 93% rating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You know, when it's a limited edition, uh, it's a reserve, uh, yeah, for sure you're going to have to pay a little bit more. Yeah. Enjoy and, uh, well, that that's was a, it for today. And yeah. tomorrow we are heading, not too far actually, we're going to be exploring the town of Tilgara because we've been here almost three nights now yeah. and we haven't seen much aside from the restaurant so there are some ruins to visit yeah there's a fortress Pucara. here it's called Pucara, Pucara. Yeah. and it's only outside town so yeah. it's not too much traveling to do mm -hmm. yeah. and then we're going to go to the other town that's called uh, Armada. I, I, no, Maimara yeah you know if you come uh, this way the best is to rent a car to try to do all this uh, with the public buses and stuff like that you're going to go nuts Rent a car, it's a little bit more expensive, but you're going to go to see places that you thought that uh, you could have never gone. Like what happened this morning, no? That little town yeah. of, uh, what was the name? Ukiya. Ukiya. Yeah. It's almost uh, not uh, posted anywhere. You don't mm -hmm. find any information about this little town. And it's amazing. The canyons we saw and, you know, but y you need a car to kind of uh, explore and, you know, get yourself into these uh, places that... Uh, yeah. Otherwise, walking, forget it, and uh, the buses will leave you mostly in the, in the main town, so... Learn how to drive stick, because oh, yes. we grabbed the only automatic. Oh my, yeah. that it was, was expensive. That was the only Aww. one in the fleet, and we played, played triple for yes. it. Here uh, yeah. in, in South America, <laughs> it's 99% uh, uh, standard, mm -hmm. the, the cars. Me, I haven't driven one of those in uh, 40 years and my knee is destroyed so the clutch it really hurts and uh, these two will uh, oh, I I, little, little to up. no oh. practice I wouldn't I, want to do the, it here the last time I drove one of those was in the, the 20th century that's it <laughs> so a so, little while ago well if you come from Europe or uh, you know over there they still use a lot of uh, standards but in North America like uh, United States Canada is mostly 99% uh, uh, automatic so people from North America if you want to come and have a cheap rental you're gonna have to get a standard if you do uh, manage uh, to drive them well no problem if you don't take a few lessons before you come because also here the driving is a little bit uh, more aggressive kind of so it's no place to be you know like i mean uh, learning learning, learning on or, the you don't want to learn on the fly when no. you have like five cars behind you yeah, yeah. yeah and especially if you're going to pick up the car in a big city mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> It was uh, yeah. It was hard getting out of Salta. It yeah. was hard with getting out of Salta. With an automatic. Yeah. <laughs> and with an automatic, you know. And uh, oh, it's, uh, most streets don't have stop signs. Okay. So remember that here, the uh, the the sequence goes. Whoever reaches the intersection, let's say two cars reach the intersection at the same time, the car that is on your right hand side has priority to go. You go to the next one, and because it's there one way the car is gonna be on your left. So you got priority to cross the intersection, right? 
Always the car on the right has the priority to cross the intersection. But don't bank on it 100% because sometimes you have a car on your left and you would have priority and this guy will sh shoot through like a... Uh, so always on the lookout and always on uh, caution, you know? Mm -hmm. More advice for you guys. There you have it. Yeah. And with that, I think we'll say goodbye for today. Bye, guys. Yeah. And we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is another adventure day. Bye. Bye, guys.